of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call, please. Harrington. Here. McKinney. Here. O'Doherty. Here. Pierce. Here. Schuster. Here. Stalder. Here. Weaver. Absent. Gabriel. Here. Shumway. Here. That's eight present and one absent, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Now I'll turn it over to the Vice Mayor, where he will do the considerations of changes in the agenda and setting the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that the following changes to the agenda be approved. One, we added a proclamation for the 50th anniversary of Municipal Clerk's Week. Uh, that's May 5th through the 11th. Mayor, that's uh, Clerk's Week. And also added an executive session for litigation. That would be 17 on our agenda. Is there a second? Second. Okay, the second is by Councillor Schuster. All in favor of these changes indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So, uh, at this time we have proclamations, and I believe the first proclamation will be read to us by, yes. Mayor, if we could just have a, a motion to set the agenda. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. Vice Mayor. Second part. I would move that uh, the agenda be set as submitted. Second. Okay, that is also has actually has changed. <laughs> Still second. <laughs> two changes, okay. We had two changes, yes. And the second is by Councillor Schuster. All in favor of setting the agenda would indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now it's been changed and set and we're ready to go. So the first proclamation will be read to us and presented by our Vice Mayor Gabriel. And this is in recognition of National Service Day, whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's counties, cities, and tribal governments are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet their needs. Whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our communities, from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century, to fighting the opioid epidemic, to responding to natural disasters, to supporting veterans and military families. Whereas National Service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. Whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 50,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. Whereas our national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve, both through their direct service and by managing millions of additional volunteers. And whereas national service representatives a uh, unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. Whereas <coughs> national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intense commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. Whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with local leaders nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and joining with the National League of Cities, the National Association of Counties, Cities of Service, and local leaders across the country for National Service Recognition Day, April 16th of 2019. Therefore, be it resolved that I, as the Vice Mayor, acting for Mayor Joe Shumway do hereby proclaim April 16th of 2019 as National Service Recognition Day. Also encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our community, to thank those who serve and find ways to give back to their communities. 
And I would ask that those with us today from AmeriCorps, the Greater Wyoming Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the Wyoming Conservation Corps, along with Senior Corps members, <coughs> please come forward. Thank you. I uh, will say a few words. On behalf of Wyoming Conservation Corps, foster grandparents of the Wyoming Rockies, Greater Wyoming Big Brothers Big Sisters, Coalitions Against Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence, and other AmeriCorps entities in Wyoming and in Laramie, we thank you for the recognition of service that happens in our community. National Service Recognition Day allows us the opportunity to see what volunteerism means in Laramie, and we appreciate you for taking time to consider that. So thank you very much. And we'd like to get a picture with all of you, so... <laughs> and I would like to let everybody know that there will be copies of this at the clerk's office if you'd like to get it from Nancy coming tomorrow. Yeah, if you could let me know if you want a copy, um, so I know how many copies you make. <laughs> Any of you that want a copy of this, just let our city clerk know. We have my copies for you. Where's Paul? You're not wearing glasses. It's not quite done. Who would like to hold this proclamation? <laughs> There you go. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm just, just trying to be short. So thanks to all the game. One of the noise was actually the podium was falling apart. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Great group. Appreciate all your service that you bring to the community. Now we have another proclamation, and this is one that I'm honored to read. This is on the 50th anniversary of Municipal Clerk Week, from, and this will be from May 5th through the 11th, 2019. Whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the office of the municipal clerk provides the professional link between the citizens and the local governing bodies and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, uh, rending equal service to all, and whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, and whereas municipal clerks and deputy clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the municipal clerk through participation in educational education programs, seminars, workshops, clerk institutes, and the annual meetings of, the, of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. And whereas it is, the most, it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Laramie City Clerk. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Joe Shumway, acting as mayor and president of the governing body of the City of Laramie, Wyoming, do hereby proclaim the week of May 5th through 11th, 2019 as Municipal Clerk's Week. I encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of our Laramie City Clerk and Deputy Clerk through the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. In witness whereof I have hereto set my hand and caused that the official seal of the city to be affixed on this 23rd day of, well, to be affixed today. <laughs> <laughs> this, we, we attempted to do this prior to this, but anyway, today is the day that we're recognizing them for this. Now I'd like to have Nancy Bartholomew and also Ryan Schufeld.
to come forward and uh, I'm going to present this. Do you want to make some comments about this, Nancy or Ryan, before we give the proclamation? Sure. Um, the governor um, did a proclamation similar to this um, to honor all the clerks around the state as well. Um, so Janine and Nancy um, and you thought this it was a good idea to honor the municipal clerks in our city as well. Um, we are honored to serve not only you and staff, but also our community. So thank, thank you. you. Great job. Thank, thank you. you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Who's well, going to take the picture? That's what we're we're going to have a picture. Oh, we're having a picture. We'll throw Todd under the bus. He can take the picture. He's tall. He's shooting right over the top. Oh, and we could not do this without the support of our families. I'm yes. just saying, we take our time away from our families yes. for our night meetings and everything. So Ryan has his wife and join, join, join one of his daughters. There you go. Absolutely. Mine are at home sick. So. <laughs> <laughs> this picture just got a whole lot cuter. It, it did. Yeah, exactly. What are you saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, right here. One, two, three. One more, and then we'll call it good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think Kinley stole the show. I think she yep. has. She was, she was the cutest one in the picture. <laughs> Again, thank you for the clerk, the deputy clerk, and all the great work that you do. Very, you do a great job for the community, for the city, and for the city council, and we appreciate your work. Uh, at this time, we have... Uh, I'd ask the city clerk if she'd give us a notice of a, of a public hearing. We don't, uh, do not have any public, no public hearings, hearings tonight. Okay, we'll nope. skip that and go on to announcements. I believe we have a couple. Um, Mayor, manager. we have three announcements. We'll start with uh, Parks and Recreation. Honorable Mayor, City Council. Um, the cup, one announcement on Parks and Recreation is we've got the Spring Creek Trail Phase 1 public meetings. They'll be held on Thursday at noon and 5.30 at the Laramie Community Recreation Center. Um, as I've said before, I believe this part of the trail is a springboard to finishing a significant pedestrian corridor that's much needed in this community. And the more public input we get at that time will be helpful on starting this, tra this path off correctly. So be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? So you said at noon is one of them, then a separate one at 5.30? Correct. There's one at noon and 5.30. Along with that, we're actually doing a focus work group with some of the students at Whiting because the intended pathway will be close to that. We're excited about that work that we'll be doing at Whiting, too. Why don't you go with your community development as well? Oh, can you clear? Day. Yeah. Um, the second announcement, I want to remind you all, we had a proclamation two weeks ago on uh, Community Cleanup Day. But uh, May 4th is Community Cleanup Day, 7.30 to 9 o'clock. We'll be handing out vests and trash bags here and sending people out to locations. Uh, lunch will be served from 11 to 1, and we're awaiting all those RSVPs from City Council to help cook the hamburgers and take care of lunch. So May 4th, it's a big improvement day for the City of Laramie <laughs> and much needed to help pick up all that windblown trash that's come in over the wintertime. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, Mayor, our last announcement, um, we received in my office a call yesterday with some good news we wanted to share with you. Uh, the council will recall uh, that earlier this month in April, you had suggested uh, two uh, individuals and entities in Laramie as nominees for recognition through the Wyoming Association of Municipalities. Um, and we learned a couple days ago, yesterday, that um, your nominations were successful and WAM has selected uh, those nominated persons and agencies. So uh, our former council member, Klaus Hansen, will receive an honorary membership 
from the Wyoming Association of Municipalities in accordance with your nomination of Klaus. Uh, we called him yesterday and let him know he was uh, very grateful and uh, said to send his thanks for uh, you nominating him and, and uh, seeking that recognition for him. And then WAM also has an award called the Community Hero Award where communities can nominate um, individuals or agencies that are heroes in their community. As you know, you nominated Interfaith Good Samaritan and WAM notified us they have selected Interfaith Good Samaritan here in Laramie as a recipient of a Community Hero Award. So both the honorary membership and the Community Hero Awards will be uh, presented to these folks at the WAM annual convention in Sheridan in June. We'll have some uh, local attendees in addition to municipal staff and elected officials. <laughs> also, I met with uh, Interfaith Good Samaritan this morning, and they are very grateful, very excited, and they will be there. And I believe we'll have Councilor Harrington that will probably host them along with our city manager, and we'll do that. I would love to be there. I told them such, but I've had a commitment to it's been planned for three years, and it's just something I will, will not be able to attend. All right, is that all of the announcements then? Thank you. Good news. Are there any disclosures by anyone on the city council regarding any of the items that we'll be discussing this evening? Okay, now we'll move <coughs> back to the vice mayor, Pat Gabriel, to complete the con approval of the consent agenda. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that the consent agenda be approved, that each specific action on the consent agenda be approved as indicated. Second. Okay, it's been seconded by Councilor Pierce, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Roll call. Harrington. <coughs> yes. McKinney. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Weaver. Uh, Present. Can't vote for things I wasn't here for. <laughs> the consent agenda. Right. Well, yeah. you, can to, okay. you can vote. Okay. With the mayor's uh, approval, then uh, yes. <laughs> um, Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay. So that passes unanimously. Now we'll go on to the regular agenda. The first item on the regular agenda will be Councillor Schuster, item number ten. Thank you. The title of it is State Revolving Loan Fund Agreement for the Landfill Stage 2 Expansion Project. I move that the Council approve the State Revolving Loan Fund, fund Document for the Landfill Stage 2 Expansion Project and authorize the Mayor and City Clerk to sign. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Doherty. Mr. Mr. Webb. Honorable Mayor, City Council, in October 2018, City Council approved a resolution authorizing the submittal of a clean water state revolving fund loan application for the landfill stage two expansion project. The application was for $5 million with 25% principal forgiveness and an interest rate of 2.5% over a 15 year term. On February 7th, the State Land and Investment Board approved the loan application. To finalize the process, the city is required to pay a $25,000 origination fee and sign a few documents that are attached to your package. They include a, uh, the loan agreement, a promissory note, and the assignment and pledge of revenues. The project is currently out to bid and is anticipated to begin this June. Are there any questions, Mr. Webb? Anyone in the audience that has any questions regarding this item? Any comments from the council? Roll call. McKinney. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Stoller. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Harrington. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay, that item passes unanimously. <laughs> item number 11 is Councilor Harrington. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that Council approve resolution 2019-38, authorizing the award of $190,945 in fiscal year 2019 to 2020 community partner funds to be note to the noted agencies and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. 
Second. It's been moved and seconded by Vice Mayor Gabriel. Uh, City Manager. Sorry, I, I could see you look around. I should have jumped up. Um, Mayor and Council, um, you, as you know, um, you received presentations from all of the um, applying agencies for community partner funding a number of weeks ago. Uh, you subsequently submitted your individual um, uh, suggestions for funding for each of those agencies. Um, we had 26 applicants this year. Um, the recommendation was that community partner awards, um, the total amount of funding awarded be slightly greater uh, by a small inflationary factor that totaled $190,945,000. And uh, attached in your packet is the uh, resolution, which is actually kind of a spreadsheet format resolution that shows how your individual votes tallied up and what the average amount recommended for each of those 36 agencies was. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Any questions? I will say this. I think everyone on the council wishes that we could have funded the total amount uh, and all of the recipients are, are very worthy of anything that's given to them. So we, you know, we, we, are, you know, we feel it an honor that we as a council can redistribute the money that comes into us in their behalf and redistribute it to them. Councilor Pierce, did you have a comment? Anyone else wants to make any comments regarding this? Councilor Weaver. I'll make a brief comment, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I completely agree with your statements and I'm glad that you shared that. I think it's reflective of everybody's views. I know that there was some discussion, at least I had some with some of the folks from some of the community partner agencies about if there might be a better way for the council to take a look at how we decide what we're going to fund and um, maybe there is a better system. I think the council over the years has tried a few different ways and this averaging out of the request still seems to be, to me in my mind, the best way to do it. But I think going forward, if agencies have suggestions that they want to make um, and they make them well before you know, we start the process, we could take a look at it. But in my mind, this averaging of the amounts is still the fairest way to do it. But uh, certainly if, if there is a different idea coming forward, I think we'd take a look at it. I think that bears uh, mentioning, here, Mr. Mayor, and I think we've done what we can and we definitely celebrate and support the important work that all these groups do. Thank you. Councillor Harrington. Um, Thank you, Mayor. I would like to echo Councillor Weaver's comments. I also had several conversations with these community partners um, regarding the um, how the averaging system can um, sort of sway one councillor's opinion can sort of sway their their funds substantially. Um, but I would agree with Councillor Weaver that this still may be the the most successful way to to accomplish the goal. But uh, okay. yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Any comments from the audience regarding the community funding outside agencies? Back to the council, any further comments? Roll call. Pierce. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Harrington. Yes. McKinney. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Um, for those community partners that have now been auth we've authorized to receive funding, they may contact the, the city and determine on how the money will be you know, uh, given to them. They have a choice on the distribution method or, or how, how often or how it's to be given to them. Um, Item number 12, Councillor Pierce. Okay, I move to approve resolution 2019-35 for $249,000 to be funded to Laramie Business Alliance, LCBA, for the construction of the spe speculative office building at Sears Sky Technology Park for tenant improvements and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Malia Brown. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to introduce um, Brad Enzi from the Laramie uh, 
Chamber of Business Alliance, and they come forth with this request. Um, they had to come forth with this request based on the MOU that the council has had presented to us, and they had to have certain stipulations to actually request this money. So I'm going to turn it over to Brad, and if you have questions, I can answer, or Brad can answer. Okay, welcome, Mr. Enzi, <clears throat> and uh, Mr. Enzi and his staff have already met with the finance committee, met with the staff, and they have met all the requirements in my, from what I can gather on everything that we've asked them to do preparing for this, uh, you know, this motion that we have, this resolution, which deals with the, the item that we're talking about. Welcome, Mr. Enzi. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Mayor Shumway and members of the council. Uh, thanks for having us in uh, to talk about this. This is re really kind of a long process to get to a really, it's kind of long and painful to get to a really good solution for our community. Uh, the, these monies, or, monies originated in 2006, 2007. The city, along with our organization, which at the time was LEDC, uh, jointly went in to build a building for Well Dog. Uh, due to business constraints at the time, they weren't ever able to occupy it. We took kind of the management and our team of city and, and organization took over the building. Uh, eventually it sold um, in 2015 to Wyoming Game and Fish and we chose to put the money into the speculative building at Cirrus Sky. Uh, at the time we had $2.4 million allocated for it and the $249,000 that we speak about today is the money that was left over from the construction which then went back into city funds. Um, in 2018, as the building sat and we were wondering what to do, and this was just before my tenure, um, uh, the, we sat down and looked at it again between the city and the LCBA and generated the memorandum of understanding of what we would need to do to access, to have a process that um, made sure we checked some boxes and before we came back to just say, hey, we want to do something with $249,000. Uh, to that end, uh, in July of 2019, or 2018, I guess it can't be July of 2019, our finance committee met and said that when we get to a point to do tenant finishes on the spec building, uh, that we would like to come back to the council and, uh, and ask for the $249,000. And July 25th of 2018, the full, our full board approved that motion. Uh, but we waited because we didn't have two things. We didn't have the tenant uh, agreement, the lease agreement signed, which has now been signed with UL, uh, and we didn't have uh, a full contracted construction price yet. Uh, the contracted construction price came in at $520,000 with retainages and so forth, and so now we've already started construction, signed the contract, and moved forward with construction, and we're now asking that the $249,000 uh, be released to help with with that as uh, a very capable and uh, growing technology sector company grows in our town. Thank you, Mr. Enzi. Any questions for Mr. Enzi or, or Chief Operating Officer Malia Brown? Councilor McKinney. So who owns the building? It says it's sold for the $2.4 million to right. the Game and Fish? Yeah. There's, there's an agreement. Let me have the city manager explain to us the agreement that we have. Or, um, or Malia Brown, either Mayor, one of Oh, I can handle it. Um, okay, Mayor and Council, so the, the um, spec building, is that your question, Councilor yeah. McKinney? Yeah, because it, it says it's sold. Well, that's... The spec building is owned by LCBA. Building. Oh, different building. Correct. Um, okay, if you're so asking, I, yeah. I was just trying to get clarification. I was like, oh, wait a minute. We're, we're putting money into something that somebody else owns. I'm trying to figure out. Well, yeah. I was like kind of lost. The original that. well was like, building was sold to the to the Game and Fish, and so that right. transaction's complete. Now the monies, which is explained by Mr. Enzo, that went into another is building. now going to the Spec uh, Building. Okay, there, that's what I was trying to. The Tech Park, which is now going to UL. Uh, okay, but we have we have somebody moving in there, right? Mm -hmm. They're and we're trying to finish the finishes to suit them. Yep, they're spread all over town, and they're trying to re. Right. Okay. To, Utilize the av available space that's okay. there. Is, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, I was like, I was like, why are you putting money into a building we don't own? <laughs> I was like, co totally confused by that. Okay. So I'm good now. I get good. it. Good. Any other questions for Mr. Enzi? Appreciate your hard work. Appreciate what you've done. Is there anyone, anything else you'd like to 
bring before council. Before well, I just want to thank uh, the members of my board and staff. Yeah. That come. We've got four members, uh, Mike, Kirk, uh, Rebecca, and uh, Nancy. Yeah. I'm looking right at her. This has been that kind of day for me. So uh, that have come right. out uh, also. Uh, we've got a great board and are really looking forward to do, continue to do some uh, uh, nice things for our community and growth with right. economic development. Great. Thank you. Thank you, board. If there, any of you want to come forward, you're welcome to also. Thank you for, for the work you do. Right. Anything else, any questions or anything from the council before we go to the audience? Anyone in the audience wants to make any comments regarding this item? Back to the council. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Councilor Weaver. I think it, it just kind of bears some repeating because it's, it's been a long time and it's been a little bit complicated. So there was a building, right, Mr. Mayor, that uh, did not work out for its original intended purpose. It was an asset that was available. It was then sold to the state for a Wyoming game and fish facility, which is really great over there. Uh, better than the old one, in my opinion possibly because I had a hand in picking out the interior artwork. Yep, <laughs> hope you like it. Um, the trout especially. I was uh, real keen on getting some of that displayed in there. Anyway, so those proceeds then went towards, I believe, the original construction of an additional spec building out there yes. that we would use for our economic development purposes to maybe attract a new client, or I think we always had it somewhat on the back burner that UL might eventually want to get into that space. That's the way it's gone, but it was a a bit of a shell of a building and there needed to be some more things done in there. And I'm not trying to be uh, pedantic or repetitive, I just think it's worth unpacking all that. Maybe not everybody's going to look at that cover sheet. So there was some money and assets sitting around that have now gone into a positive existing purpose for economic development in the community for a group that's thriving and looks like they're ready to expand. So thank you for your patience, but I think it might have been useful to go ahead and outline that a little bit just one more time. Good, good summary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I will say this, we, we didn't always know that there would be a positive outcome, but there certainly has been from, from the efforts of the staff, board, everyone that's worked on this. Okay, any other comments from the <coughs> council? Roll call. Harrington. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Stalder. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Schuster. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay, that item passes unanimously. Now we'll go to item number 13, the Vice Mayor Pat Gabriel. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that Council approve resolution 2019-36 appointing Mayor Shumway as the City Council Rep and Councillor Harrington as the proxy member to the task force on the University of Wyoming Housing and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Second. It's been moved and seconded by Councillor Pierce. Any discussion? I will say this, <clears throat> when uh, House Bill 265? 293. 293 came forward, we asked for an amendment that would include three voting members uh, from, from the city of Laramie. We ended up with one, and as you can tell, there there will be one that's the the what they call the designee of the of the mayor, which really is the city council's designee. And then there's a there's a proxy or an alternate that's that's in this motion, and uh, we we feel strongly that we need to be at the table for this task force and, and move forward at this. There's a lot of items that have great interest to the community, to the university, to the city, and, and to all of us. Any other comments? Question, Mr. Weaver. Mr. Mayor, and probably for the city manager, because uh, after the events of a couple of months ago, and this, made it, it's, this uh, legislation made its way through that process and went to the governor's office, he made some changes as well. Um, and what I wonder if the city manager can give us is a picture of, is this task force and the decisions or recommendations that they make as they go through their process, are those going to be binding on the project or is this purely an advisory um, group? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, that's what I want to know. Um, 
Mayor and Council, um, in your cover sheet, there is some description of the charge of this committee. Um, my understanding is that their decisions will be largely binding, okay. recommend uh, advisory or recommendations in nature, but um, will be binding in the respect of the financing for the project. And there's a, I won't read it to you, but there's a lengthy description of their charge in the cover sheet and kind of the activities they'll work on as well as the membership that remained uh, following the final uh, vetoes and changes by the governor to the actual legislation. So we're, it's a 10 member committee at this point, state and local representatives. Thank you. Does that help? Everything? Yep. Okay. Remember this is a $300 million project, which if you look at the uh, contributions from the state to the University of Wyoming over the last five to 10 years, there's been a now a billion dollars put into to, uh, the university's infrastructure and also building program, which puts a lot of pressure on the city to provide the services, the infrastructure, and everything that we have to be involved with in a project of this enormous size. In fact, if you look at it, this is probably the largest project we've had since the renovation of the, U of the Wyoming Capitol building. So it's, it's a huge project and a huge investment by the state of Wyoming and so we feel privileged to be at the table discussing this because it has such a huge impact on our community. Anyone else that wants to make comments? Maybe just one more Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sorry. Talkative no, no, over no, here for no, Mr. No uh, Councilor Weaver's chair which is to once again thank the efforts on behalf of our legislators who uh, did their job and I think listened to their constituents and those of us on the city council that tried to communicate with them and did their best to try to make sure that we had some representation at the table which was not originally included. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Anything from the audience? Any further comments from the council? Roll call. Weaver. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Pierce. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Thank you. I want to thank Council for the honor of being selected to represent the city on this very important issue. Item number 14, Councilor O'Doherty. I move the council move to, well, I guess I just moved to approve resolution 2019-37, prioritizing the recommendations of the ad hoc community alcohol consumption and best practices review committee and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Second. It's been moved and seconded by Councilor Pierce. Now, again, what we're doing <clears throat> right now is we're prioritizing the items that you have before you and they're, they're listed there. Is there any questions or any discussion from the council regarding this prioritization of the, the recommendations from the ad hoc committee on community alcohol consumption and best practices? Councilor Doherty. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I uh, would like to make... And by the way, let me just say this. Thank you for serving as chair of this ad hoc committee and also serving on that committee with you were... Uh, who are the other two members? Councilor Pierce. Councilor Pierce. Stalder. <coughs> Stalder. Okay, thank you for your work on that. I would, I would like to move to, uh, um, let's see, uh, uh, amendment to remove, to strike um, priority number eight that says consider methods to increase minimum fines for underage drinkers presenting false IDs. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Do you want to? Kind of give us so your reason for this. My understanding from our um, our attorney and from uh, Chief Stalder is that those fines are kind of set by statute, and I don't think we should be going there. And I also feel like a two hundred thirty dollar fine is a lot of money for someone that's eighteen to twenty one years old already, and that and that we have a a judge who can <coughs> use discretion if somebody is repeating the offense she raises the fine so I I feel like it's not something that council has to address okay any other discussion yes. Councilor Stalder I would like to move um, to strike 
Number seven, that the city implement late night drink special restrictions starting at 10 p.m. on all license holder facilities in Laramie. Okay, uh, just, just a second. I think we're gonna deal with these one at a time, but city clerk. You yeah, let, said just, exactly what I was gonna say. What, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with the first amendment and then we'll go to you for, but let's, st let's stay on the item which is the- uh, Number eight. Number eight. Any further discussion regarding the amendment to the uh, prioritization of these items? Okay, anything from the audience? Council, you ready to vote on the amendment? Okay, so let's vote on the amendment. And is that clear? Yeah, to, to strike, strike number eight. Yeah, yeah, number eight. Okay, so I'll be removed from our list of priorities. Go ahead. O'Doherty. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Harrington. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay, so that's the first amendment to this resolution. Now we'll go to Councillor Stalder. <clears throat> I move uh, to make an amendment to strike number seven, the city implement late night drink special restrictions starting at 10 p.m. on all license holder facilities in Laramie. Um, there was a lot of data. Let's stating. get a second. Second. Sorry. Okay, there's a second. Now go ahead. There's a lot of data talking about um, late night drink specials maybe increasing the amount of alcohol consumption. Um, but I don't think it's the city council's place to tell a private business owner when they can or cannot offer specials. Um, and that might be best practice and something that can be addressed at the tavern owner meetings. Which yeah, are part of the priority list. Thank you. Is that everything? That's everything. Okay, anyone else? Councilor Weaver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I support the amendment, though I come at it from a completely different angle. I would disagree with the city not being able to uh, regulate some businesses, particularly those that we grant licenses to under our authority. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is this is still kind of a personal behavior regulation effort on behalf of the city, and that's where I think we get into choppy water. Um, people can decide to responsibly purchase late night drink specials or fail to do so and then end up in trouble for it on their own. Uh, the city as the license granting authority, I think, can do that. But in this case, I don't think that's our role. So I do support the amendment, although for different reasons. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Councilor or Vice Mayor Gabriel. Thank you, Mayor. I was just curious if we could have the chief address this. Does he have a position on this? Chief Stalder? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a... Uh, Back and forth here. Councilor Stalder, anyway. listen closely. <laughs> Mayor Shumway and Councilor Gabriel, we're going to enforce whatever you put out there. Um, I can't tell you if it makes a difference or not. I really can't. We have, we have excessive drinking. We have overconsumption issues within the community, and I'm not sure that any one particular strategy out there solves the whole thing. Uh, there was discussion on the ad hoc committee that if you remove the late night ability for an establishment to have late night drink specials that you'll move that traffic into private re residences or to somewhere else. I tend to agree with that with my experience over the years is that when we, when we address one issue over here something else pops up over here. It's kind of like whack-a-mole mm -hmm. and it takes, a, it takes a concerted approach across the board to accomplish the outcomes that I think we all want to accomplish. And I think that we've worked towards that comprehensive comp capability when it comes to alcohol. So it's the council's decision. We would enforce it if that's what you made a decision to do. I will tell you that it's difficult to enforce those types of things because if you eliminate drink specials, Somebody could have food specials, get a cut there, spend their money on the alcohol. So, again, it's that. I, I can't tell you if it makes a difference. I believe that our, and I, I explained that to the ad hoc committee, that, that the approaches that we've put in place over the year, addressing underage consumption, overconsumption, all those different things have worked well for us. 
Thank you. Councillor Gabriel, or Vice Mayor Gabriel. And I was just curious, this was brought up originally by the sheriff, correct, Dave O'Malley, that he wanted some kind of restriction on these the specials? Mayor and Councillor Gabriel, uh, the discussion in the ad hoc committee was that the restrictions on late night drink specials was brought up by the university, both uh, Monica Lynn Keel and um, Black, Blackburn. Sean, yeah, okay. Um, Sheriff O'Malley originally voted against that, and then he came back in the next meeting and said the reason he voted against it was that there was no clarity on what late night met, and that's how it okay. came to the resolution where it said after 10 o'clock. Thank you. Councillor Doherty. Um, I'm uh, opposed to the amendment because we apparently it isn't against the law to overserve, and we have no way to control overserving. Uh, so it serves as a surrogate for overserving. If it's one thing you can do to keep people from from giving out uh, high quantities of alcohol at, about when people are leaving, so that's what I think it serves its purpose for that. Thank you. Councilor Vice Mayor Gabriel. And just for clarification, I think we've, we've discussed this, but I can't exactly remember. Can you tell me why the 10 p.m. time frame was established? Councilor so, so because originally it was, the, the research showed late night specials or increase alcohol um, violations. And so the attempt was to reduce late night specials and then Sheriff O'Malley said, well, if I were on council, I wouldn't be wild about this because what's late night? So he just wanted specificity. So, so the research that was shown by the AWARE group was that the drink specials in, increase alcohol, um, well, that was the consumption issues. And so that's what that was about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other? Questions or any other? Councillor McKinney. Well, I kind of sit with Weaver on this. Um, I agree with him saying because we grant the license, we should have that. While at the same time, I say it's a privatized business. Anytime you try to tell somebody what they can and can't do in their private business, I don't believe that that's right. I just don't think it's right, period. Um, trying to say that somebody's not going to drink more because of the drink specials. If they brought money to, with them to the table, they're going to drink whether you have specials or you don't have specials. Um, taking a, their personal right away from making a decision to drink that late night special because you remove it, I think that's taking their private individual right to make a decision for themselves regardless of whether they're under the influence or not. I don't think that's right. They get in trouble, that's their fault. They have to pay the price. That's where I sit. Thank you. Any other discussion? Anything from the audience? Any final comments from the council? Let's vote on this second, this, this, this amendment. <clears throat> McKinney. Yes. O'Doherty. No. Pierce. Yes. Schuster. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Harrington. Yes. Weaver. Yes. Gabriel. No. Shumway. Yes. That's seven yeses and two noes, Your Honor. Okay, so that amendment, uh, on that amendment is successful, and so that item will be removed from the resolution. So we have two amendments that have been successful. Any other discussion or any other amendments from the council? Anything from the audience before we go to the vote on the resolution as amended? Council, anything finally before we vote? Let's go ahead and vote. This is the on re the resolution number 2019-37 as amended as amended. Schuster. Yes. Weaver. 
Yes. Harrington. Yes. McKinney. Yes. O'Doherty. Yes. Pierce. Yes. Stalder. Yes. Gabriel. Yes. Shumway. Yes. That's nine yeses and zero noes, Your Honor. Okay, so that resolution passes unanimously as amended. All right. We are now to the on item number 15, which is public comments. Is there anyone that would like to make any public comments on non-agenda items? Seeing none, then we will move to the council to for consideration of future council work session topics. Councilor Doherty. Um, I, I would like to be able to have a discussion about the role of the traffic commission. And um, I, I guess the other things about Worth and Clark are being studied, so that will come up anyway. Um, Mayor and Council, I, I would ask to maybe hold off on a work session because staff is trying to come up with um, their own resolution of what needs to happen and work with the Traffic Commission. The Traffic Commission actually asked for a work session in May to look at this also and whether potentially to go to a work session. I think we need to come up with them some ice solutions and ideas with yeah. Uh, the city manager and, and others to work on some of the what role the traffic commission would do. So I'd ask to hold off on a work session. Now, do we have do we have a second on moving this to a, one that we put on our work work okay. session? I would gladly second it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll put that on a list okay. that will be brought forward when it's ready. Okay. As we do with all work sessions, there's nothing that's pushing this to a date certain. Okay. And so we will put that on a list, and then as soon as staff is ready, as soon as we've heard from the Traffic Commission, and, and there, then the recommendations will come forward on how we're going to deal with every issue that we have uh, that has interest from the council, the community, and such. Um, so is that satisfactory for that item? Yes. Any other work session items that anyone wants to bring forward? Looks pretty full still, Mr. <laughs> we, we have some that have not come forward yet, and uh, when they do, we're gonna we'll, we'll always stay busy. Let's just get through the budget. <laughs> budget. <laughs> Please get through the budget. And the items on our list there. Okay. And Third Street tomorrow night. Third, Third Street, Street tomorrow, tomorrow night. night here. Be here. We'll, we'll probably have a full house. There's going to be a lot of interest on this. So, plan for. Um, it's a work session, but we'll have lots of people that probably be in attendance that have interest in, in the discussion. Okay, so then that completes item number 16. We're on to item number 17, Councillor Pierce. Yeah, I move that we adjourn to executive session regarding litigation. It's Wyoming Statute 16 4 405, lowercase a, Roman numeral 3. Second. The movement second. All in favor of adjournment to executive session indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. One no. <laughs> it's been noted, and we will still go to executive session with the right <laughs>